We really are in the final stages for the boat. We are stoked for it to finally come together and it's gonna look even better when all the finishing touches are in. Hey, I'm Kelsey. And this is my husband, Patrick. We're scientists and avid environmentalists turned adventure elopement photographers. We've been living in Hawaii for the past five years. We're following our dreams and just bought this boat. Her name is Blue Planet, and we're renovating the entire thing. Follow along and watch the transformation as we prepare for epic elopements at sea. We're on the way to the North Shore right now to go visit our contractor's workshop. Um, we're gonna see what our cabinets look like in person, so it's kind of exciting. Basically just checking in on the status of everything. Um, we've seen a bunch of pictures, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what everything looks like in person. This was our first time seeing all the new fixtures for the boat. There was a lot of back and forth during this process, and we're so thankful that we had a contractor to guide us through. We're really thankful we actually went in person to the workshop because there's so much behind the scenes work and design that went into making this happen. The cabinets had to be custom milled to the curve of the boat. The flooring was all custom milled so that it would be watertight. And everything was redesigned so that we maximize space and efficiency on board. Okay, we just saw all of their cabinets being built. Everything looks really good. How many weeks? Two weeks. Two more weeks, supposedly, <laughs> until all of that starts going onto the boat. As a recap, we purchased the boat in June of 2021. Our amazing contractor started work later that summer, but up until that point, the brunt of the work was just removing everything from the boat. Of course, we had to take out the janky staircase and tear out the settee and all of the old cabinets. And then we spent hundreds of hours sanding every single surface in preparation for paint. This is just the intermediary stage of the boat. We'll share a final transformation video very soon. While our contractor handled the majority of the new builds and big projects on the boat, we got back to trying to fix all of the leaks. Working? Mm, no. I'm just making a mess. And although we're not done, we rebedded some deck hardware and are making progress. We are so excited. Over the past month, our cabinets have been installed and all of our custom built cabinets are now finally in. We thought that it was just going to be a couple of weeks and that turned into six months. So most of the Islander Freeport boats that are out there have a full fridge over here which actually breaks up this space and makes the back corner pretty inaccessible. I know it wasn't accessible on our boat so what we decided to do was to open up this whole area to do a half fridge here and we did a smaller fridge under the seating area that will act as a fridge or freezer. The previous fridge was around 200 liters, and although we've lost a little bit of space, we now have 175, it's actually more versatile because our Dometic can be either a fridge or a freezer, so we actually gain fridge space, and we now have access to all of the counter that the previous fridge was blocking. All right, we're on our way to West Marine today to pick up our appliances. We have a fridge going under the counter and a chest freezer that's gonna go under the settee area. Hopefully those both fit in our car here. 
put down all the seats in the back and we fit quite a bit of stuff in this car, so we'll see. under 24 inches, but the fridge is more than 24 inches, <laughs> so it's not going to fit. Plan B. Plan B. Unboxing in the cockpit. Also putting in brand new countertops and it's gonna waterfall over the edge right here and we have all of this really nice storage space in the back now we didn't actually have closed cabinetry when we purchased the boat a lot of other Islander Freeports do but it had been taken out at that point so we did these and we have these really beautiful kind of arch themes throughout the boat. So there's some of this texture, the rattan and then that shape in every room now, kind of tying the boat together. Obviously the galley is a small space, so we had to be pretty resourceful for what we were putting back into here. And we decided to do some upgrades that weren't on the original build. So this pulls out and is a countertop that you can cut on. And this piece actually opens up because the cabinet beneath it is our boat trash can. Um, boats are notorious for not having enough trash space and we were just trying to think ahead. So we already put this in here and I'm really excited to find, to, I'm really excited to use this for the first time. So one of the very first things we bought for the boat was a box full of these poles, mostly because they were on sale, but also because they're sitting flush and it's important on a boat not to have too many things that can stick out and jab you. So there are a couple of places that we have kind of more of a traditional pole, but the way that the counter is going to sit is these will actually be behind the counter and this is a high traffic area so you don't want to be walking by on the way to the engine room trying to grab something and have your clothes snug on this or the boat to tilt and you to hit yourself i've already broken a toe and we aren't even sailing yet so we're just trying to think ahead about how we can minimize in minimize injury on the boat although we had new cabinets built for the galley we reused as many of the old cabinet faces as we could, which meant that we had to remove the handles, sand them down, fill them with epoxy, and then paint them. So the galley is pretty much done. The countertop gets installed in a couple of days, and then we can finish all of the finer details of the galley. But there's a couple of areas of the boat that are still very much in the works and not quite done yet. One of those being the seating area. So from this angle, the boat looks nice and finished, but if you come over here, there's a lot going on and it's not quite done. We did a custom build for the seating area too. It was janky. There was a lot of termite damage originally in this area and um, you couldn't actually get into the seats very well. So we wanted to transform this into some new storage. All of these open up. We have battery storage, water storage, and a fridge freezer right here behind me. And then the back is now accessible too. Um, it wasn't really useful on the previous design of the Islander Freeport. So we have another like eight inches of storage space back there, which is gonna be awesome. And then there's something special <laughs> happening down here with the floor. Hopefully it works. And if it does, we will reveal it in a future video. Spoiler alert, it's a table that comes out of the floor.
The seating area has been framed and mostly built. You can see here we have a lot of storage, especially behind um, the seat back itself. A lot more than the original plan had. And we got a lot of space under here for our water tank. This is where our custom tank will go. So plenty of storage and it's pretty comfortable. Babe, what's happening with the wires behind you? This wire chase is still being worked on um, for the windlass. But biggest thing was the leaking under here. We haven't like completely resolved that issue since we haven't redone the entire tow rail. So this whole area needs to be serviceable. Um, previous way that it had, it was like cocked and glued in. So it was really hard to get to this area. So I think moving forward, they're gonna just put some little caps, screw caps, so we can pop those off easily and unscrew the whole thing to get to where these wires are. Now that the seating area has been framed out, the next thing we need to do is measure for a custom water tank. We took the previous tank out of the floor. It was nasty, I'll link that video below. Um, but we don't have any water on board right now and we wanna build out a custom tank since obviously if it's square, it won't quite fit the volume and we won't have as much water. Hopefully we'll get um, about a 40, maybe 50 gallon tank to fit in this space. So today Patrick and I are going to build a mock tank out of cardboard to make sure that it both fits into the actual seating area and then through the door behind me because we had a little bit of trouble getting the fridge through this morning and had to take it out of its box. Dan and Kika did this for their water maker. It looks so good. Dan and Kika are architects. Yeah. Ours looks like poop. We're not architects. The last time I did this was probably, yeah, second grade <laughs> for my pet turtle. What were you doing? Making little like hoses so we could run through and have a little like cardboard house. We're really thankful to have found professionals on the island that are so good at their jobs and we're able to work under all of the difficult conditions that come from working on a boat that's not at dry dock. It's gonna make a huge difference for the final product, as you can see here, when the boat's not even done yet. If we turn that side and move that, then we create a little gap against the wall here. But there's enough material to do a whole full backsplash out of the same stuff. is a little bit farther along, hopefully you can understand why we decided to paint some of the areas that we know were very controversial. So we got several comments about why we painted the ceiling. Um, it just wouldn't have looked good with the floor and the other colors that we have going on. We're going for a more modern feel. We love that our Islander is original from the 70s, but we don't want to keep the boat in the 70s. And we think brightening it up really made it a lot more modern and it's going to look so much better for photos. But we really are in the final stages for the boat. We are stoked for it to finally come together and it's going to look even better when all the finishing touches are in. So stay tuned. <laughs> 